Welcome to Blue Talks. that was a day when I lost 
most of the trust that I had in myself and in other people. It is always amazing when you finally find out why. Why? What's standing in your way? What is standing in your way? And that's when the healing truly begins. So the work that I did, the study that I did, did explain to me what it really takes to be a peak performer. And that's why I'm talking about what you can do to be a peak performer too. So today I'm talking about what peak performers do when they set goals that other people don't. Peak performers slay their dragons, and peak performers think for themselves. Now, how many of you have heard of that Harvard study about how they followed a certain class of, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of students for several years? Yeah, mm -hmm. and then they found out those 3% were the top because they broke down their goals. Well, apparently, that study never, har never actually happened at Harvard. So these re researchers found out that maybe it was Yale University. So they tracked down the secretary of the class of 1953 and an associate researcher who was there at the same time. And they both vouched that no such study had ever been done there either. So whoever started this, we had them to thank. <laughs> now in 2014, there was an actual study on goal achievement and goal setting. Very interesting. So they had five groups of people. Group one was told just to have a goal. Group two was told to think about their goal. Group three was told to create an action plan. Group four created an action plan and told to support a friend about their goal. And group five had a goal, had a plan, and they sent their plan over to a supportive friend and they updated them on a weekly basis. Then after four weeks, they brought them all back together and asked them how they did. So group one didn't do well at all. Groups two to five did better than group one. And group five did better than any of them. So you got to have a goal, you got to have an action plan, and accountability. There is a large segment of our population who don't even feel worthy enough to have a goal. They think they can't change anything in their lives. So they stop dreaming. Then there's another section of the population who have a goal, but all they do is just talk about it. And talk and talk. They never do anything. So they let their dreams die on the table. Peak performers, they know what they want, and they go after it, simply because that's what they do. Nobody's ever, nobody is ever going to tell them that they can't do something that they really want. Peak performers slay their dragons. So, okay, so you've got your goal, and you've got your plan. And for some people, as soon as they start executing it, Things are going well, and then all of a sudden, circumstance happens, and they quit. So these people also let their dreams die on the table. But for every plan that you have, you're always going to run into obstacles. You're going to run into people who get in your way, circumstances that get in your way, and some of them seem insurmountable when you're going through it, but you do it anyways. Well, that's what peak performers do. They never quit. They never give up. They will go through an obstacle, around it, over it, underneath it. They will do it. And really, any one of you can do whatever you want as long as you're following three simple rules. It's legal. It aligns with the unchanging universal laws. And you respect the rights of other people. You can do anything you want. So how many people are NFL fans here? Okay, great. So you know that the New England Patriots won their sixth Super Bowl last year. Now, 
They didn't have a stellar season last year. They were only 11 and five. Right now they're doing a lot better. But last year, it was a disappointment because they're the top team and everybody wants to beat them. And so, you know, more than likely they had a plan at the beginning of the year. But they probably had personnel changes, injuries, opposition doing better. Whatever reason, they weren't winning like they normally would. But what they did was they changed their plan. They changed their plan as they needed to. Because it's really important that the goal is important not the plan, especially when you're doing something that you've never done before. Because you see, a plan is merely a guess. It's an estimate of what you think you need to do in order to get to your goal. But it's not always gonna work out. So you gotta change your plan. You have to be flexible. But never give up on the goal. Never give up. Peak performers, and I love this the most, think for themselves. They do not follow the crowd. In fact, the crowd is mediocre. The crowd is afraid. The crowd will not step out of its own way. So Dr. Rollo May is an innovative psychologist who said that the opposite of courage isn't cowardice. It's conformity. So peak performers are non-conformists. One of my very favorite heroes is Albert Einstein, and his name has come up a few times today, which is pretty awesome. This is a man who used to smile at criticism, he used to laugh at his critics. He would, because he was himself, because he really believed in himself, all he needed was to use that brilliant mind of his. He used the four most important mental faculties that he had. He had his imagination, his intuition, and we talked about that today as well. His willpower, his will as well. My God, we have so many wonderful similar similarities today. And also his deep, powerful reasoning. He didn't need experimental physicists or physical mathematicians proving his theories because he was able to look at all sides of what his argument was and he was able to figure it all out by himself. He didn't need somebody to give him permission to do what he wanted to do. And yes, he was a nonconformist, nonconformist because later on in life, he didn't comb his hair and he went out in public rumpled and wrinkled because he couldn't have cared less what anybody said about him. But there's more. To be yourself, think for yourself. When you are thinking at such a high level, when you really want what you want to do, and it's totally different from anything that you've done or from what somebody else has done, then you're also going to take risks. You're going to be a risk taker. And a risk taker is somebody who just literally jumps into a situation and they just go and do it. Nobody can talk them out of it. So Helen Keller was 18 months old. Due to an illness, she became deaf, dumb, and blind all at one shot. She was a rambunctious, active, normal little girl before that. So imagine how she must have felt when all of a sudden she couldn't do any of those things that she was able to do only a few days earlier. She really struggled as a little girl until her parents finally found the right teacher for her, and that was Ann Sullivan. And Ann Sullivan stayed with her for the rest of her life, supporting Helen Keller. But Helen Keller made it all the way through college, graduated, and became an inspiring speaker and author in spite or because of all her handicaps. She didn't, it's kind of interesting because when I think about her, I realize that there are probably detractors and people who criticized her, but she couldn't see and she couldn't hear them. So she could completely ignore them as well. 
And then there's Lucille Ball, one of my heroes. Most people remember her in her wonderful comedy shows with her husband, Desi Arnaz. But did you know that she was also Hollywood's first female executive? Yeah, and she, she took a chance, a big chance, on a little concept show called Star Trek. <laughs> so if you watch the original show and credits, and right after credits it says Desi Lu Productions, that's her. And of course Star Trek, as most people know, is one of the most successful shows around, and you know, 60 years later, Everybody still knows about it and talks about it. So your takeaways today are peak performers are nonconformists. Peak performers are, they never quit. Peak performers never quit. Peak performers think for themselves and they take risks. So thank you very much to Harvard to all of you watching and listening to me, and also thank you to Blue Talks for having me.